Hey you guys, I'm vlogging from my room today. So hopefully you won't see anything that's out of order. Because things tend to be out of order. You know what I mean? I had to clean it up a little bit for you guys. How are you doing today? Guess what? I have something really cool to share with you. I think this is pretty cool, so tell me, tell me what you think. I've been using iMovie for six months to make my videos. I have figured out how to edit a lot better during that time. I'm definitely not perfect at it, but I have figured out how to incorporate music into it and how to show more movement and how to show, you know, I think more interesting cuts and stuff like that. I'm getting somewhere with it. And that may surprise you that I've used iMovie all the way through. I only have one video that I used Filmora to edit with. Shower time. Wait, are you gonna take a shower right now while I'm recording? I loved using iMovie, but it was super glitchy. And so sometimes I would put a couple hours into editing one of my videos and I'd have strange glitches happening. So then I'd have to spend another hour and sometimes more going through and fixing that. And it was frustrating and time consuming and add a lot of time onto my videos and some videos never made it up to the upload of YouTube because of that. So I was really frustrated. One night I had lost, recently lost a ton of, of data, lost a ton of edits, had to go back and fix a lot of things and I decided that I was going to go on to the app store and leave iMovie a, a pretty comprehensive feedback kind of review of why I was so frustrated with their product. So something kind of cool happened. I did that like June 4th and they got back a hold of me pretty quickly and asked me if I wanted to work with an Apple engineer on pinpointing what these problems were and potentially fixing them. And so I'm going to be editing this video again today in iMovie and seeing if we can resolve some of those issues that I've been having. I need to have the problem repeat itself in order to give the engineer really good feedback. So <laughs> since we're on the topic, any of you guys who have been watching me know I'm an accidental vlogger. I never intended to vlog. It's been a really, really hard road for me and anybody who would look back through my videos can see that the, the editing originally was horrible. Some of my videos that would have been really funny were not funny because my edits were so poor. So the fact that people subscribe to me and still tune in to listen to me is actually really cool and, and it's amazing. Just to give you an idea, when I first started doing this stuff, I started off with my iPhone and people really criticized me for that. You use your iPhone to record vlogs, that's crazy, you know, that you're not going to get good quality and so on like that. I am still using my iPhone, that's what I'm recording on right now, and I have a little toolkit that I use along with it. And One of the things I use is an external mic. The sound quality has gotten better. I actually have it zip tied to a Joby and that's my setup um, with my iPhone. Uh, one of the criticisms I got from somebody, and it was a good criticism, was that I needed to have a stabilizer, and I took it to heart, which is unfortunate because I spent so much money on trying to use a stabilizer. I have found some tricks for using my Joby to get stable shots. I try to incorporate shots that are still, shots that are moving, and shots that I allow less stability in. But most of the time, I take my whole setup and I throw it in my purse. It's all editing from there, which I'm still working on. We'll see what happens with this whole iMovie thing because something really cool might come from it. We'll see how that goes. Next subject. I don't know if you guys can tell that my eyes are swollen today. They are. And the reason for that is that I cried for like three hours last night. It was terrible. It was, it was a horrible, horrible night. My reason for that is that I'm completely insane. That's not true. My reason for that is that my body is feeling really bad right now. You know, I've talked less about my medical issues on here because I don't really enjoy talking about it very much. But I, I know that you guys wonder what's going on with me and so I'm gonna give you an update. I'm not on Synthroid anymore. I got a, uh, a thyroid ultrasound that showed that my thyroid was normal. So it's very confusing, but that's where I am. The Synthroid was making me very sick. Six doctors later, I'm seeing a naturopath in Oregon, 
And they did my first full blood workup, which is strange because I've asked every doctor I've seen for a full blood workup, every single doctor. And they failed to do that because they all had their own ideas about what might be wrong. And they only tested for that. So what I found out yesterday is that I have no testosterone in my body. So it might be kind of, you know, I feel like a lot of people might think, who cares if you have testosterone? You're a girl, you know what I mean? My testosterone was so low, it measured, um, it only showed up as under three. So I don't think that it was even registering on the blood test at all. And um, I think that that has made me feel really poor emotionally and it affected my appearance and it and still is. Um, and they're not really sure why it's happening except for that they, uh, they believe that it's stress related and all of my other test scores are okay with the exception of my vitamin D being on the low end. So it's not even deficient. Kind of a crazy twist to things. Apparently the doctors don't understand it either. That's what I'm finding out is that nobody's gonna know exactly why my body's not not producing the stuff it needs right now. But what I, one thing I do know is that it's affected my body so like, you, a couple videos ago, somebody asked me and said that I was fit, which was very flattering. I appreciate that because I've gained 20 pounds, <laughs> not of not of muscle. Um, I'm not at my fittest right now at all. I tend to be muscular and I tend to be slender. I wasn't always that way, but in my later adulthood, that's kind of how my body type has been. My body just changed very significantly. I started retaining water a lot. I feel like my muscles fatigue easier and I generally was just more fatigued. I'm very hesitant now to say that it's all because of one thing or the other because I feel like I'm getting led down one road and then back to another road constantly just trying to get back to figure out you know what is wrong with me what is happening and all that stuff affects me emotionally and I think it's completely insane I think it's insane that nobody tested it um, I think it's insane that doctors put me on such a high dose of Synthroid. Um, I'm very frustrated. I feel like I feel like none of the doctors did full testing like they should have. And I'm completely freaked out by the idea that I have zero amount of a hormone in my body that my body requires to operate properly. And I think that sucks. So, whatever. Um, but I am hoping that once I get that, hormone in my body that I can start maintaining more muscle mass and become more fit and um, and I can't wait because you know what since I've been making the video I have been sick the entire time I've been making these videos and I mean sick you guys have not seen me you guys haven't seen me flourishing and in good shape and feeling good so I'm hoping that that will come about you know one day I'll feel good one day I won't the emotional part is so difficult. It is so difficult because I'll feel um, overly emotional and not really know why or not know how to handle it, not know how to work through it. And I guess this is what makes me a vlogger, right? I share easily. I share things easily, share information easily. I guess I'm a TMI person sometimes. Well. I share things on Facebook. I share when I'm frustrated. I share when I'm hurt. And I had a friend recently give me some feedback. They were trying to protect me, trying to help me. And they told me, you know, hey, you need to stop airing your dirty laundry on Facebook. Wasn't exactly doing that. Um, you know, I feel like airing dirty laundry is more like talking about specific events in your life. But I was definitely venting very generally. The stuff that, that annoys the crap out of people. And the feedback hurt my feelings. The feedback definitely hurt my feelings. But I thought about it and uh, and this is what I decided, okay? So aside from having issues that complicate my emotions, I tend to be an emotional person. And I try to um, counter that with logic. I'm a very logical person as well. And I try to use tools in order to stay even keel. I choose to be emotional and I'm going to explain why I choose that. So when I was 19 years old, I joined the army.
Again, very emotional. I had a really tough go. I, my eyesight is very poor. I can barely see. And they took my contacts away and they tested us to get glasses made, but they didn't give me my glasses for a week. So I had to do some really extreme things. Mind you, I can't see past here. I can't see that. But when you're in the military, especially when you're in basic training, nobody cares what you're going through, okay? It was really hard for me uh, being a young and emotional person. I think that my drill sergeants kind of honed into the fact that I was emotional and, um, and saw that as a weakness, and they started to try to exploit that, probably to make me stronger. And what ended up happening is that every morning they would single me out in front of the platoon and have me do push-ups before we even got started. The hardest part was had our barracks split between male and female platoons and the drill sergeant from another platoon used to make me stand in front of um, an entire male platoon and they would degrade the way I looked. They would tell me how fat and ugly I was, probably preparing me to meet my in-laws. <laughs> totally kidding. But that's what they would do. Um, and I would cry and they, you know, they would laugh at me and they would jeer me and that, that happened several times when I was in basic training and it was a really hard experience. But what it did is it made me very angry and it made me angry all of the time. It made me angry all the time. I, I made me extremely defensive because that's what happens when you're under attack for a long time. You get just super, super defensive, you know? And I got to the point that when men were even the least bit out of line with me, I would combat them very quickly. I have a sharp tongue, I'm quick-witted. When my brain is, is full strength, not when it's lacking an entire hormone that it needs to actually have like memory and thought process working properly. And it made me block my emotions. So what I found was that it was easier to be not emotional than it is to be emotional because you are not putting yourself out there. You're not opening yourself up to hurtful criticism and people tend to fear you a little bit when you are defensive and when you're non-emotional. But then when I got out of basic training, I was in a relationship with somebody and what I found was that I could not turn it off. I mean, I could not turn off the hard edge. I could not let my guard down. I was unable to be emotional um, with this person and I was not able to be soft. And now by nature, by nature, I'm extremely compassionate. I'm extremely soft. I'm extremely sensitive and I'm very emotional. And that's just the way I am. That may not be the way I come across. I, I recognize that I have, I come across maybe defensive on my videos, probably exhausted <laughs> as well because I've been very sick and negative. My illness has affected my ability to feel positive. But, but the true nature of who I am is I'm a very joyful person and, um, and I'm very soft and sensitive and compassionate. And I completely blocked all of that out. And it was detrimental to me. It was, it was really hard on me. Um, I went on to, be, to go to permanent party and still trying to have a relationship. And I, I was ruining it. I made it really difficult to be around. So I chose to be an emotional person. And what I found when I had to make that conscious decision to allow myself to feel emotions, what I found was that it was like a floodgate. It was very difficult to go from being non-emotional um, to being emotional. And, and my emotional regulation was difficult. And it still is. I have a really hard time knowing when to block out emotions. I can't watch scary movies. I can't watch hurtful things. I have a lot, I have a difficult time with that. So that's where we are right now. I tend to be more compassionate, I tend to be softer, and I tend to be emotional, and I've made that decision. And what I had to do in order to be that way is also be tough as nails. I'm telling you, I am rock hard tough inside, I am. And that doesn't mean I don't cry, what that means is that I know that if I cry, if I shatter, if I break down and just all out get hurt, that I can march right through it. I can, I can do that. And that's way stronger than not allowing yourself to feel anything, I, I think. The double-edged sword to that is that I have turned into an extroverted introvert, meaning I, 
I like talking to people and I wish to talk to people more, but I don't tend to seek out very much social stimuli and frankly, I'm lonely. And also, I think that it's difficult for me emotionally and mentally not to have more people who I interact with in person. So what do I do? I get on Facebook like so many people do. And sometimes I say things I shouldn't. And sometimes my heart is on my sleeve and it's all my, I'm bearing my soul and it's all out there, you know? And so my friend told me, you know, you shouldn't do that. You're gonna get judged. People are gonna judge you and you're, you're too old to be carrying on that way, kind of. And so, based on what I told you about my experience with being emotional, what I decided is that I don't care. I don't care, because here, here's the thing, this is what I'm thinking. If you're judging me, and you're like, wow, that girl is very emotional. That girl knows how she wants to be treated. That girl knows how she's being affected. She is comfortable in saying that. If somebody's making those judgments about me, which are the correct ones, that I'm going to go ahead and say, good job, you did really good with that. If they're making judgments other than that, I don't, I don't have, a, I don't have anything to say about that. I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to think about someone else's judgment of me, except that most of the time people don't take the time to get to know somebody, and that's not my fault. It's not my fault, and guess what? Nobody else cares what I think about them either. They don't. If they did, then they wouldn't be putting, you know, family photos up, all of them in the same gingham with the, the family crest on their shirts and huge bows in their hair because they would know that I think that looks really dippy, right? But they don't care because that's their family thing. So do it, go do it. But another thought I had about this whole thing where people are like, hey, you know what? Don't put your emotions out there. Don't allow people to judge you. Don't be too emotional. Don't be too openly expressive and emotional because if you do, people won't think you're mature. My thought on that is that may be correct. That may be the way people view that in our society. And I think that's total bullshit. I do, and I'll tell you why. So I may be an introvert. I may be isolated. Um, I don't get enough social stimulation. All that is true. And even on top of that, I still know that there are people out there who are worse off than I am, right? They don't have a lot of people to talk to and they might be struggling and they may need to have a way of dealing with things. And then you get on Facebook and you have, you know, it's snark land. And you have people throwing up memes like, these are the 10 things that you should or shouldn't post on your page on Facebook. And I think that's, I think it's all stupid. I think it's all stupid. I think that if somebody wants to express themselves in whatever way makes them feel better, that they should do it. And I don't think that they should worry about anyone judging them. I think it's bad that in our society, we don't encourage people to say how they feel and say what they're thinking, you know? And I'll tell you something else. Do you really believe that because you paste a perfect world on Facebook that that's what people think of you? Because that's not what people think. It's not. The harder you try to convey to people that you're happy, the less happy they think you are. It's just the way it is. And when, they, when people see you truly happy, they can tell. They can tell because you're not trying to make them think that you're happy. It's true. This video is about being allowed to express yourself on social media, however you damn choose. However, however you damn choose. Because even if, even if you're a public relations expert and you think that you're gonna control people's opinion of you on social media, you're not actually doing that. You're not. Every single person has an individual idea about who you are. And of all the opinions out there, I probably have 1,000 Facebook friends on Facebook, people I all would want to have lunch with at some point, but I can't do it. I can't be spread that thin. But of all of them, the number of opinions that matter probably come down to 10 people. And those are probably the same 10 people that I would be able to call if I were crying for three straight hours. True story. So I guess if you don't make that list, 
then um, your opinion doesn't matter. I think that it's sad that we shame people into believing that they need to think twice about how they express themselves and what they're saying, especially when it has to do with their emotions, you know? If you're not directly talking about somebody on Facebook, if you're not using their name um, and you've got something to say, then you should say it. I, I rarely do that. If I have a beef with somebody, for the most part, I'm gonna call them. But I have erred in judgment in that way before, but very rarely. I also don't think Facebook's healthy for me. It's, some, it's a platform that I will either stay away from for a long time or overuse. I think in general, it doesn't do much for me. It's a kind of a habit. I bet I'm not the only one who uses Facebook out of a habit. But I think I'd probably be happier if I didn't have Facebook. And I'd probably be happier if I were having lunch every once in a while with a friend. Well, I guess that's all that I wanted to tell you guys. There's nothing else exciting out there. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think if I covered everything um, about iMovie, about the equipment I use, about the fact that I'm completely insane, um, but not really. And then also, oh yeah, that I say whatever I want when I want, and that's just kind of how it goes. It's true. It's all true. Oh, I hear footsteps. I hear footsteps. I gotta go. I gotta go. Mommy. Mommy's being called. Bye, guys. Hey. No. 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 No.